Good afternoon, New York, and the rest of our listeners around the globe. My name is June Stoyer, and I'm the host of the Discerning View radio show, which is a special series focused on the Catholic faith. Our podcasts are available on iTunes under the Organic View Radio Network, or you can simply visit our on-demand section at www.theorganicview.com to listen to previous segments. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you, so please email us at questions at theorganicview.com. Today's show is sponsored by coronatools.com, the nation's leader in garden and landscaping tools. Listeners of The Organic View can receive 20% off their coronatools.com purchase by using the coupon code ORGVIEW. That's O-R-G-V-I-E-W. For more promotional offers, please visit our website at www.theorganicview.com. And don't forget to check out our contest section. This Memorial Day weekend, we honor the brave men and women who served our great country. When we take time to reflect upon the lives of these brave souls, we're reminded of what it means to have perseverance in faith. On today's show, my dear friend Deacon Joseph Zabrovich is going to share his message of faith in remembrance of those who have bravely served to protect us and the liberties we enjoy as we celebrate this Memorial Day weekend. So I'd like to welcome to the show Deacon Joseph Zabrovich. Hello, Deacon Joe. Good afternoon and welcome. Hi, June. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Deegan, thank you so much for joining me today. Could you take a moment and share a little bit about yourself with our listeners, as well as some of the ministries that you're involved with? Sure. Um, thank, well, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to be on the show. It's certainly a privilege to be here and uh, sort of share out some ideas with you. And I'm at the parish where I'm, I'm working with, is Curie of Ours in Merrick, New York. And I've been there since I've been a deacon, since 2011. The scope of my ministry is a fan out to just about everything, cradle to grave. So I do the baptisms, the weddings, assist at the confirmations with the bishop, and do pretty much everything in between, including the committal services for, for the burials. I concentrate my work on uh, RCIA, which is the ministry for people who are coming into the church, who have no background in the Catholic faith or in either in any faith. So I'm working with them to instruct them and bring them into the faith. And I also work with uh, my wife, Catherine. We've been working in the pre cana ministry, which is the ministry for young uh, engaged couples who are coming in, into uh, marriage. It's a very fruitful ministry because a lot of young people who are getting into marriage really have no idea what they're getting into. And so we're, we have like a six-week program where we sort of initiate them into the good points and, and challenging points about being a married couple and what they have to expect when that happens. So it's, it's, uh, it keeps me busy. And, and, of course, you know, the usual routine of being in the parish, of assisting at the masses, of uh, assisting at prayer services, and so on, and uh, just being, uh, being there for the people. And so, you know, um, part of, part of my, my faculties, as it were, is to, is to preach. And so I try to naturally concentrate on what the theme is for that week with uh, whatever gospel we are reading, um, but also to, to branch out and, and discuss current events or anything that happens to be in the news or uh, upcoming of holidays and such. So that's what I do. Thank you. From what I understand, your father served in the military. Can you tell us a little bit about him? Yes, I'm originally a Brooklynite. Uh, I came from Brooklyn, and my family is Slovak from Czechoslovakia which is now Slovakia, and uh, 100%. He was born in Brooklyn, although he was not necessarily conceived in Brooklyn, <laughs> which is something we always joked about. But um, uh, lived, lived his life out there, and then this was, this was uh, around 1920 or so when he was born, and so uh, he was just about the right age when, when World War II started. He enlisted in the Navy and uh, served on the uh, SS Massachusetts, along with several other ships, uh, throughout the course of, of, of the whole war and, and was honorably discharged after that. And um, uh, he had a lot of stories. I remember him regaling me with stories of things he went through in the Navy. And uh, I, was, I, was, I tried to pass them down to my children as well. And uh, it was certainly, um, he certainly had an eventful life, you know, in, in, that, in that particular phase of, um, of, of his life. And so uh, we always respected uh, the people who were in the, the services, 
and we always celebrated our Fourth of Julys and Memorial Days and Flag Days. And um, I'm glad to see that there's much more interest now in, in doing that these days as well. I know every time I see a veteran that's selling poppies, I think of my late father who served in the Korean War. I chose to volunteer to do a lot of advocacy work for veterans because of my father's service as well as other family members because I know that they made a lot of sacrifices that I will never really understand because you can't possibly put yourself in their shoes. But I do know one thing, the service that they so freely gave to us to fight for the liberties that we enjoy is very similar to the journey that we have as far as our faith to persevere in faith. And recently you shared a message that addressed this very subject. Could you share this with our listeners? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, what, what happened is that I was thinking about, uh, well, in the, the upcoming holiday, Memorial Day, and also uh, how it related to us, in our, I guess you could say our spiritual battle that we have uh, on this earth. And um, some of the, I wouldn't say misconceptions, but the, um, the, the complexity of, of what we do when, when we engage our spiritual life and how we live it out. So when you and I come into church, for instance, we carry the weight of the world on our shoulders and we kneel down to pray. And is it just like you alone praying in the church or is there something else involved? And I, I really wanted to get get into that, and so that's what I concentrated on in my homily, and that's, that's kind of what I guess uh, resonated with you when you heard it. Once I started thinking about this, I thought, I thought of um, a tour I took of the USS Massachusetts, where my father served as a machinist during World War II, and um, a reenactor was, was one of our tour guides then. He was dressed in all the technical gear worn by the troops landing on the enemy beaches, for instance, on D-Day, where the Allied forces effectively and secretly assembled the largest armada in history to liberate Europe from the Nazis. And he, he meticulously went through every piece of gear he was wearing, explaining how essential it all was for his survival. Now, many of the landing craft could not actually reach the beach to deploy the troops because of mines or obstacles, so they were forced to dump the soldiers in the water where they had to swim to shore rough surf or heavy gunfire. A lot of them couldn't swim, and many of them were just lucky enough to just get, get to shore alive, much less with all of their gear. And our guide reminded us that soldier who did not have his rifle or his helmet or his boots or his clothes or his food rations was, for all practical purposes, not a soldier at all. He was just a wet guy standing on the beach. And so... That reminded me of some interviews I had actually seen with soldiers who were at the invasion on D-Day. And one remark that how impressed he was seeing all the giant flotillas that converged on the beaches of northern France. And he was overwhelmed by the tremendous amount of uh, what he called the stuff, the stuff that kept pouring in from the channel. Giant tankers that were sort of like gasoline, oil, asphalt, grease. Cargo ships carrying generators, machinery, electronics, bulldozers, backhoes, skids piled high with food, clothes, automobiles, furniture, prefabricated field hospitals, whole buildings, and a seemingly endless supply, supply line of everything coming in needed to construct and hold, you know, whole towns. So, and this didn't even include the thousands of personnel, the trained personnel who poured ashore to build and manage all of these things. And, and it was a giant operation. And, but when we, we talk about war, we talk about soldiers on the battlefield, we tend to think of individual soldiers facing off. And we seldom think of the hundreds of men and women stretching back for miles and miles needed to keep each soldier properly fed, clothed, and locked into a direct line of communication with headquarters. And so I was curious about, you know, what it actually took. I mean, specifically, what it took to put something like this together. Was there actual field manuals that told how to do this? So I checked online, and lo and behold, they were there. All the field manuals from World War II were there in a little, little set. And um, 
I was surprised that they're only available on CD-ROM. Uh, and I wondered why I couldn't just buy it as a book until I looked at the table of contents and saw that the entire uh, set uh, was over 105,000 pages long. So we're talking about a massive operation. So then uh, I started thought, thinking about us as individual Christians. I would wager that many of us picture ourselves as just individuals who come into church with all of our problems. We, we kneel down or we say a prayer, come to Mass, read, read a little scripture, and then go home. And to many, that is their spiritual life. And they have no idea what the big picture is. And that's sad, because we have so many people around the world, maybe even people we know, going off into their own directions, starting their own crazy little faiths, no faith at all, trying to get to heaven all on their own, with no church, no tradition, no Eucharist, or what I say, no lifeline. So, this is not a good thing. <laughs> but this defines our culture today. We're stunned wet, naked people wandering around on the beach, searching for something. Christ is divine. We are the branches. And wherever we sever that branch, we may fool ourselves into thinking we're free, that we can define our own reality, that we can make up our own religion, that it's just, it's just Jesus and me. But sooner or later, either we or those who follow us discover that we've cut off our lifeline, our lifeblood, our nourishment, on the day that we were baptized, took our first tiny step on the path to salvation, a great lifeline of grace was opened for us. A floodgate of God's providence was unleashed, and a rush of blessings and charisms and consolations flooded into our lives. Not randomly or haphazardly, but guided by the Spirit, guided by the Holy Spirit, specific to each one of us, specific to our vocation. And, if I can use this phrase, but, uh, specific to the battle plan that had been laid out for us. And I say battle plan because just as a soldier must move forward through hostile territory and enemy gunfire to get and secure his objective, so each of us, no matter how diverse we are, have a single objective too, to get to heaven, bring our loved ones with us. And that includes our parish family and those in our current, our circle of influence, our circle of friendship, our circle of love. So, you know, Memorial Day, we think of those who sacrificed so much so that we can breathe free, live free. And it's springtime. Look up at the trees, the vines. A healthy branch doesn't just sit there. It blossoms. It bears fruit. Every one of us should know that we are loved. We should know that God is never surprised by the circumstances that we're in. And we know that whatever setbacks we may be facing or assaults or challenges, no matter how dry or abandoned we may feel in our spiritual life, you can always look over your shoulder and see the vast cloud of witnesses stretching back as far as the eye can see. Angels and saints, powers, principalities, a support system, much more vast than anything in those manuals that I was going to get. They're ready to relay to you whatever you need to carry on. Once you realize that, that changes the game. Suddenly, you have backup. You have someone watching your back. So, I guess my message was just have faith. Remember the words of our Lord who said, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. It's a lifeline. We're not alone. We're part of a family. And we're very blessed to be in that family. And that, that basically was my, my message for anybody out there who is willing to hear it. That was so incredibly beautiful, and I know that... I personally will listen to this 
probably about 100 million times because I think it pertains to not only this weekend, but so many times when we're faced with different trials and tribulations and we just feel like, okay, well, what do we do now? And your words are just so incredibly powerful. I thank you for taking the time for sharing your message with our listeners and also with me. I think it's an incredibly beautiful message and one that will truly help us to have strength and to persevere in faith. Well, thank you, June, for inviting me. It was certainly uh, an honor to be on your show. And, um, you know, I mean, they say, I I don't know how true it is. They say, you know, you you use less than one-tenth of your brain when you're thinking. I suspect it's not true at all, but it's somewhat relatable to spiritual life as well. I think many people have what they consider to be their spiritual life, but they're only using a very small percentage of what's there for them. And if they realize that it's so much greater, then I think that would be a great source of solace for a lot of people. So, you know, I I, I offer a prayer for our men in, in, in the armed services. Ask God to protect them for keeping us safe, for protecting our freedoms, for going forward without without question into you know into the into the breach you know where there's only hostility and i ask god to protect and keep him safe bring him back and um you know for, for those who did it in the past for those who are doing it now and considering the situation in the world now those who are going to be doing it in the future and uh, just to let them know that they're thought of and that everybody you know who has a good heart should thank them for their service thank you Before we end, I'd like to give a couple of shout-outs to some friends who have so bravely served, such as Mr. John Wells, who continues to battle to help veterans get the financial and medical benefits that they need, Dan Bickard, Calvin White, Jerry Ensminger, Mike Epstein, Brian Labar, and I'd also like to mention my dear friend, the late John Berry, who was a Vietnam veteran and died last year after bravely fighting so many illnesses. He was in so much pain, but yet he continued to fight to help our veterans get the medical and financial relief that they needed. Thank you so much for joining me today. And folks, thank you for tuning in. Please check out the companion article, which will appear on the Organic View Radio Network's website, which is www.theorganicview.com. Thank you for tuning in. This has been June Stoyer with the Discerning View Radio Show. Have a great afternoon and happy Memorial Day weekend.